<laughs> my biggest fear is not being able to uh, not being able to have I don't really know what normal life is anymore but um not being able to have a uh, uh, something similar to the life I had before. I know I never will because of what I've been going through. This experience has kind of changed my outlook on a lot of different things. Um, it's changed my my demeanor. It's changed my like my focus. Um, but I want to be able to own a house again I want to be able to have a car like to be to have the things that a normal person my age would have <laughs> so brother let's start off can you please tell us your name uh, my name is Charles Charles yes sir how old are you Charles uh, 38 tell us a little bit about your your childhood paint us a picture oh childhood I uh, grew was born in Atlanta Georgia um, Grew up in Jersey, in Atlantic City, and up until I was 12, and then I went to uh, a boarding school actually in uh, Newtown, Pennsylvania, Bucks County, uh, George School. It's a uh, it's a college preparatory school. It's a uh, it's you had to test into it. It's, it's very very uh, very Ivy League. Of uh, it's one of the top 10 boarding schools in the country. That actually. Um, the high school was, I, I was a boarder, so I stayed on campus uh, four years, the best four years of my life. It prepared me for a lot. Uh, it also taught me a lot about myself uh, being there and just coming, like coming of age in an environment that fostered um, more uh, positive thinking, more creativity, more um, have that quest for knowledge because they would foster, everyone has something to give to the table. Uh, they're a Quaker uh, community, so their saying is mind the light. And that being um, mind the light of God, that's in every one of us. Um, every one of us has a, a, a spark of him, regardless if you believe or not. And if you mind that, or if you take heed of that, um, you're treating everyone with the same kindness, the same respect, uh, then you'll go far in the world. Okay, uh, Ray. So tell us a little bit about what happened after the boarding school. What did you get into next? Uh, so I did go to uh, college for two years. Um, I was working through college, so that uh, ended up taking over a little bit, but I um, ended up starting my career at uh, in restaurant industry. Um, I was working at Applebee's while I was going to Penn State Abington, which is right down, right down the street from uh, Jenkintown, and <laughs> that was uh, a little hectic just because you know I had to work in a school full time. I was on the volleyball team as well, so you know, so the sports in in uh, high school as well as college. Um, you know, it's like I said, work took over. I uh, ended up becoming. Um, a trainer for Applebee's and called the Apple Elite, and they will go around the country and, and train uh, in new store openings. Uh, especially if you're a general manager, which I ended up being for, <laughs> uh, ended up uh, not that long ago, um, before pre COVID, clearly. Uh, I was a general manager of a restaurant in Concha Hawk and the Lucky Dog Saloon and Grill. Uh, that was very stressful, <laughs> very uh, time consuming. But it was very rewarding because the the owners actually uh, let us do or let me and my my staff um, when they had ideas as well to come up with some things to kind of um, have a new give a new feel to the place um, have a new uh, concept uh, make it just a, a revamp right because they moved uh, from Lafayette Hill to Constra Hawkins so they wanted to do things a little different. So when when did you start using drugs? Uh, when I was 33, actually. Uh, so five years ago, out here, um, right before, almost like right around when COVID started, um, I ended up not having my name on the lease and 
the landlord where I was staying didn't want to renew the lease because of everything that was going on. And the person who I was uh, renting a, plate, a room from, uh, his dad had gotten sick. So he ended up moving back home with his dad. So it was kind of like up in the air. And then when the governor closed everything down, I had no job and not for nothing, the, the restaurant that I was at was, uh, was too small to kind of give anyone uh, any type of furlough or any anything to hold them over. So I was a uh, little SOL <laughs> and ended up coming out here after a couple months of staying with a couple friends, ones that actually could, you know, accept people that weren't family. So how long have you been down out in Kensington then? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. Yes. And what was the first drug you tried? Uh, the only drug I did was uh, is ice. Uh, meth, okay. Um, it started out as something that was uh, a... It started out as a, it's like a, a, a party thing with, gr with groups of people. Uh, everyone was getting high and, and being stupid. Um, but then it ended up being coming, becoming a necessity out here to be alert, to stay awake, uh, to kind of be safe, uh, to watch my stuff as well as watch other people's things. Um, because not for nothing, almost everybody out here does dope. Uh, I don't. That's. I mean, I'm a hot commodity, so, <laughs> so yeah, they had me. Um, <clears throat> didn't have me, but I would watch stuff for for my friends and make sure that everyone was safe while right. being around it you know, out here and this craziness. Um, it. It, like many people say, it's not how you do something. It's, it's. I'm sorry. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. Um, I kind of microdose. I don't use it to excess. I, ha I make sure. Like I did two and a half weeks of research on it before I even attempted to touch it, um, just because that's the kind of person I am. Um, I was straight edge before. Like I said, until 33, I didn't. I'm like I maybe smoked weed twice. Uh, I did drink a lot, but that comes with the restaurant industry in, in itself. Um, you know, cocaine, nothing like that. But the um, I guess the the caveat of that is it being the only thing I do that just kind of limits my scope on on how to maneuver around different people um, who are high on other things like wet, like uh, dippers, fucking a anything that's, it's all, all the craziness yeah. that comes along with it. And not, not to mention the people that do use masks like in all, like do hat, like gram shots and, and go out. So how, mu how much would you say you spend every day on your meth habits? Ten dollars or so. Oh yeah, and, and when, okay. And it's not even every day. I don't use it every day. So what is it? You you smoke it, mm -hmm. and then how long does it last? Uh, it depends. Um, it, the smoking actually stopped getting me high. Um, I didn't want to do the other ways, but you know, there's other ways to to you know have that drug administered, but. Um, there happens to be just a, um, for me, it's, it's easier to, and more of a mellow thing to just smoke. How do you make money out here? Uh, I actually scrap for, I do DoorDash when my bike doesn't get stolen. And um, I was working and doing odd jobs for, with somebody, but uh, he ended up kind of just using my time and my, and my uh, skill as, as a, Something that wasn't uh, valuable to him. Like my time is valuable to to me. I thought it was valuable to him, but it clearly wasn't. Never paid me for the amount of work I did. Not for nothing. It's, I'm, I was kind of thinking that was happening anyway. Just with the, the way that he was uh, <clears throat> kind of maneuvering and trying to pay me with drugs instead of money. I was like, that's not how. That's, that's not how this works, bro. Yeah. Like I'm not one of the, one of 
I'm not a fiend. I don't, right, I don't right. need. I don't need it like that. Where, where, where do you live now? Uh, I actually live under uh, the 95, um, under 95, on West, Westmoreland and Richmond Street uh, in Port Richmond. Uh, I was staying a couple of different places, but this is kind of where I have home base, uh, or created home base rather. Uh, PennDOT actually owns where we where we stay, but they recently had people come in and clear everything out. Um, everything of mine was trash, so slowly recouping and getting things back from from that. Do, do you have children? No. What's the scariest thing that you have seen out here? I was actually just speaking on this the other day. Um, my friend and I were discussing PTSD. And uh, my first year out here, there was a, a guy that I, I ended up getting close to. He, uh, he and I were talking and he, was, he fell asleep in his chair this is at Ruth and Clearfield, where uh, Prevention Point used to give their um, their lunches. And while he's asleep, this guy comes down on a bicycle very quickly, um, out of nowhere, hits my friend in the face with a lead pipe three times, and it caves his face in. And mind you, like. I was a lifeguard. I was I'm, I was basic basic life certi certified. Um, I was a lifeguard instructor, so like it, it's in me to kind of jump into into action. And the, everyone that was around me that saw this happen just stood there, looked, and then went on about their their business while this man's like choking on his own blood. I like I, I went to help him, tried to keep his airway open. Um, and until the ambulance got there, um, he ended up passing away on en route Damn. to the hospital. But um, that kind of shook me again for, again for it being my first year out here. It was something that I didn't know could happen, nor did I think it would. I would see something like that happen right in front of me. And it just uh, it, it shook me a little bit. So how how is your mental health out here like? Um, it's it's getting better, getting better. Um, it wasn't it wasn't good for a while. Um, it was easy for me to kind of uh, say, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay, um, when I'm actually not. There's been many times that I've broken down many times that I've been um, you know taken to a point that no part nobody really should be uh, mentally and not for nothing it, it just it, it helped with being around certain certain people certain like atmospheres and helping to uh, kind of get back to why I feel like I'm out here, uh, which is to help other people and get out of the situation. Um, I have a, I feel like I have a pretty strong grounding in, in, uh, in myself and I, what I can bring to, to someone right. in terms of how, how I can like help them out mm -hmm. if they're stuck in the cycle. Um, I really haven't been in one long enough to, to kind of be just go with the go with the flow kind of thing. My biggest regret is not making more time for myself, which I'm actually doing out here now. Um, so I guess it's not really a regret, but being being able to uh, in the restaurant industry, you give so much, so much of your time, so much of your energy, so much of your 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 being to everyone else to make sure that their uh, their experience is great, that their food is good, that you want them to come back, like reoccurring visits and all that. But you forget that you have to make time for yourself um, in, in order to give to other people um, your, your best. You need to understand yourself more so than anything else first and know how to help yourself first. And in that, 
having time to understand and get to know yourself better um, all the ins and outs the good and the bad parts of you even though uh, you may not want to know them okay. I've, I've come to see a, a little bit of a darker side to myself out here simply because of how uh, how I've had to carry myself um, in order to stay safe I've never used to be an angry person I just found myself uh, one day I was just like angry for no reason and that was when I like had to check my, myself I'm like you know, like what's what what is making me feel like this why am I why am I uh, why am I doing this to myself be a lot more uh, aware of people be more con Noise disturbance down here is outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> to be more considerate <laughs> of uh, of what's going on, um, and to to have uh, a lot more patience with uh, with people that you know might not be in in the same or in a good headspace where you are, or be able to. Um, to even say that they're not okay. Um, it's also taught me to ask people, hey, are you okay? Even if you don't know the person, be, be, more, be more compassionate to the people that are around you because you never know when you might need some of that in return. Uh, the, the good thing about my uh, my drug of food is, is I don't. There's no detox from it. There's there's really no addictive uh, like chemical to it. Um, it's more of a mental addiction. Um, but I've stopped for months at a time before uh, I stopped for a year once. It, it's easy for me, <clears throat> like I said, because I started late. It's easy for me to kind of like, okay, I've had enough. I can, I can, I can make it. I can make it through without having to be in that mindset. If certain things are in place, you know, like housing, like security, like you know, certain certain things like that. All right, AML family. I want to tell Brother Charles, thank you so much for being courageous and you know, letting us in on his life. And hopefully this story resonate with somebody and they won't come down this road. Charles, welcome to the family. We'll stay connected with you. Is there anything you're in need of that we can help you with? Um, main thing, honestly, uh, clothing, clothing, yeah. What size do you wear in? Sneakers? Sneakers, <laughs> 13, which you see these, that's, uh, <laughs> I got these, uh, a week ago so that's how much I'm on my feet um, pants and <laughs> shirts uh, the pants are 32 34 okay uh, shirt medium large depending like uh, if it's a long sleeve I probably do large okay. uh, medium short sleeve uh, and yeah okay the large jackets if oh, awesome okay AML fam Please support our brother Charles and let him know he's not alone. He's a warrior and we'll stay connected with him. He's one of us now. So remember, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, we out there. Peace out.